Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good Monday morning. Okay, some of you on the West Coast, it's really in the morning for you. Here on the East Coast, it's technically almost lunchtime. I'm just doing some double checking of tech here. Hi, Linnea. Okay, so can you guys hear me? Can you see me? I'm assuming everything is good. I'm just making sure that I am showing up live on my Facebook stream. Okay, perfect. Okay, I can see and hear myself on all the platforms. I have Instagram over here. I have Facebook over here. I have notes galore, guys. Notes galore. Hi, in case you haven't met me before. I'm Ashley Sorokis. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist. I'm a doTERRA diamond essential oil educator, and I'm a branding and website expert specifically supporting wellness entrepreneurs and health business owners. I'm known for being super strategic, super transparent. I say the things that other people only say when they're drunk, except I'm not. And I love to teach systems with soul to help free up your jam-packed schedule so that you can get back to your zone of genius and the things that you really love doing. Thank you, Veronica says, looking good. I did my hair. I washed my hair this morning for you guys. Like, look at me all going on with my bad cells. It doesn't help that it's also, it's dry air. Whenever the hair air is really dry and we don't have moisture, I get some good, I get some good bounce in volume. So I'm having a good hair day equals a good day all around. Now I'm following a list because I know I'm going to forget things, okay? So if you're here live on Facebook or live on Instagram, I know some of you and I know where you are, but say hi, um, share where you are from. I don't know, like who, who's joining me? I see quite a few people joining me on Instagram, which is funny, which is very fun and I, again, I just posted last night about how much I love this internet thing and that I can reach people worldwide from Chatham, Ontario, Canada, which is like kind of in the middle of nowhere and I'm so honored to be able to do this. All right, so what are we going to be covering today? Today is day one of five days of, morning Brittany, of free, uh, you know, live stream content about websites, websites and branding. We'll talk about some branding, but truly it's going to be a lot about websites specifically and how to help you find more paying clients and customers on autopilot through and actually using a website. And that's what I'm gonna teach you all about. Leslie says I win for the middle of nowhere. Yeah, she's in Newfoundland, in the middle of a rock. Some of us are in the more middle of nowhere than other people. Today, we are specifically covering how to find new paying customers for your health business. Now, this might not actually be from like just about websites. I'm gonna talk about some different ways as well. Um, hi, Ascent Lori is in Squamish, BC. I don't know where Squamish is, but I know where BC is. I've been there before. But specifically today, we are covering the three main ways that you can spread the word and market your business. And when I'm talking about like a wellness business, but honestly, these can be applied to all different types of business. Why social media isn't working for you, even though you're spending hours on it each week. I am so guilty of that. And what actually works to find new paying customers, whether you're doing email marketing, paid ads, social media, or speaking engagements, all right? So that's what we're gonna cover this week. Before, let me check my list. Guys, I'm prepared for this. Let me check my list. Before we dive into today's topic, I wanted to remind you that, and let you know, my course is opening up next week for enrollment for $100 off for a few days. If you want notification of when that goes live, you don't wanna miss it, please click the link in my profile if you are on Instagram and the link of the caption in Facebook, there's a link to my waitlist if that's something that interests you. If not, then you just watch what I'm doing here and I just lost all of my notes on Trello because I closed the window. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. Okay, so. The message for today, how to find new paying customers for your health business. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, there are different ways to do this, right? Like there's there's the traditional ways, there's the new ways, we have social media now, like we have all these ways that 10 years ago, some of them didn't even exist. Now, there were some things 10 years ago that we might have tried that we don't do now because we, they definitely don't work. But let's do number one, word of mouth referrals. This is like the holy grail of building your health business because Pro, and I have pros and cons of each. Pro, it's the cheapest option in terms of actually paying um, and your time and your energy. The con is that you can't always trust that they're going to happen, right? Um, the con as well, so in our health industry, 
here's the trap that I fell into when I first started. I was like, okay, I'm just starting. I don't know what I'm doing. I need to um, grow my community and get to know other people who are looking for these health and wellness solutions. So I thought, well, I can't, it doesn't look very professional to operate out of my house. And this was back when I had a one-on-one -on -one health consulting, you know, health coaching. But um, I was like, it's not professional if I'm just sitting here in my house. So I need to rent a space. I need to look professional. And I paid, I believe it was $450 month, uh, dollars a month to have a, a wonderful office in a health food store, a brand new health food store. And there were two other health food stores in our city of about 50,000, but this was a brand new one. And the advantage of that you think of renting office space in an established clinic or even a new clinic is, well, they're going to refer people to me. But what you need to know in our industry is whether you're trusting other practitioners. Let's say you're looking to team up with your local naturopath, chiropractor, osteopath, health food store, whatever it might be. What a lot of them aren't telling you is that they're not making any money either. So they need to keep their paid customers for themselves and their paid clients for themselves. And so they're not going to be referring people to you. Like I spent almost a year renting an office in this health food store and not once, not once did I ever have anyone be referred to me. Now, as I kind of spoke around the community, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, it, you know, it, I had people start kind of just telling their friends and family about me and referring people to me. But like, honestly, if you're sitting back doing nothing and waiting for other people to refer people to you, number one, it takes time and energy on their part. People are stressed out. They're really only looking at like themselves on a daily basis, kind of like, what do I need to get through? Everyone's in survival mode is kind of what I'm saying. Not that anyone's not trying to help you out, but honestly, helping to grow your business is the last thing on everyone else's list, right? So we're not going to be able to count on that as like a sustainable source of growing and way of growing your business. So that brings us to the second option. This is, it depends on whether I, I'm very conservative as an investor. I, I sometimes talk about myself as being cheap. So option number two is paid ads. So the pro of paid ads, now they obviously work because there are so many people that do these paid ads, right? But the pro is, is that you can systematize them and once you have the proper funnel in place, so what this involves is you knowing exactly what it costs for you to acquire one of these paying customers, because it's not about boosting an ad to get more likes on your page. Do not ever do that. Do not ever like pay for followers. It does not work. What you actually should always be interested in, because what those are are vanity numbers, followers, likes, comments, engagement. Now engagement is one thing. Engagement is creating a community. But if you are just following the followers, if you are just desperate for growing that number of like, you know, either getting to like, let's say a, a nice round number of a thousand followers or 10,000 followers here on Instagram so that you can have the swipe up feature, that doesn't mean that you're growing paying clients. That means you're just following a vanity number and that doesn't always grow your business. There are people with tens of thousands, if not more than 100,000 followers, or maybe even a million followers here on some various platforms like Instagram that will tell you that they're not making any money. And it's like, how do you have, like, it's not about the followers. It is about how much does it cost for you to move someone from a brand new, being brand kind of newly exposed to your business, like what we would call kind of like a cold subscriber, a cold website visitor, a cold, a person coming to you on Instagram and seeing your account and being like, who's this girl? That would, that would be what we call like a cold customer or a cold lead. But we want to know how much does it actually cost to turn that person into a paying client? Because if you're not actually making money, you don't have a business. This is not about followers, guys. So paid ads, you, the pro is that you can systematize it once you have that funnel in place and you know, okay, it costs me $10 to acquire a customer, but my average customer will make me $15. So I know that if I can pay to acquire five customers, I'm actually up, you know, that $5 net on each customer. That to me sounds like a lot of work for making not necessarily a lot of money. So the con is that you're spending money you likely don't have because probably you're watching this because you're just starting out and you don't really have money to invest in paid ads. Con, another one is if you don't know what you're doing, you could lose major money. Like you're basically just flushing your money down the toilet. It's like Facebook here, just let me just send a transfer directly to you and not go through the ad system because this is doing nothing. Um, another con, if you hire someone to do this for you, 
to find someone who is really good at doing paid ads, it is freaking expensive. And I'm talking to find someone really good, five to $10,000 a month to be able, and that doesn't include the ad spend. It's insanely expensive. And then another con is you have to have those systems in place before you catch those people. You don't ever boost an ad just for fun. You know how Facebook, if you post on Facebook, I'm sure they're going to start doing it on Instagram, possibly even on Pinterest is you put up a post and they're like, this post is getting more engagement than 85% of your other posts. And like every time you post, it's telling you that it's like, well, how could every single one of my posts be getting more engagement than 85% of my other posts when it's every single post that you're telling me that you start going like Facebook, are you just trying to get me to boost this ad? And that's all they're doing. They're just saying boost ad. If you just do that boost ad guaranteed, it's not going to be worth it. Okay, before we move on to the third one and then what actually works, again, another another little plug here. My course is opening up for enrollment this coming Sunday, April the 7th. If you want to be on the list to get $100 off, this doesn't mean you have to buy, guys. It just means you're just like, what is this about? I want to know more information about this course. If I choose to buy it, I absolutely want to get $100 off of it and have the option of a payment plan. Click the link in my profile and add yourself to my wait list. Okay, number three, third way to find paying clients in your business is social media. I think that's kind of what we always think is kind of the only way is social media. We forget that there are paid ads and we forget that there's word of mouth referrals because we're all like social media. Uh, so the pro is that it's free if you do it yourself. Now the con is that what you're paying, what you're not paying for in money is that you are paying for with all of your time. Social media, we all know. I don't need to tell you that it takes up a huge amount of time. It takes a huge, huge amount of effort. It takes a huge amount of energy that maybe you need to be pouring into another area of your business. The other con is that it's not guaranteed to find new paying customers. Again, we want to not just look at are you getting followers? And believe me, I get caught up in this too. I put up a post and I'm like, why isn't anyone liking it? Why am I not getting any more followers? And then I remember it's not about that. It's actually about how many people are clicking to my website, how many people are joining my email list, because I know that a certain percentage of those people will turn into paying customers. This is not to treat people like a number. It's really not that. It is more, I need to make sure that when I'm investing my time and energy into something, and all of you too, we all have a limited amount of time and energy. We do not have unlimited time to just be like playing around on social media, even though it's totally fun and it gives us a dopamine rush and we're like, yay, more followers and likes. But if it's not actually growing your business, it's a hobby. And who of us is going to sit here? Guys, last week, again, I'm trying to cut down on my Instagram usage. And last week I was still on Instagram for over eight fucking hours. Like what the hell am I doing? That's a lot of time. That's a full working day on Instagram each week. That is a lot. So if you're going to be spending that much time on something, you need to make sure that it's working. Um, another con is the algorithm. Can we all just like do a big eye roll when we talk about the algorithm? Because you might be doing great. You're puddling along, you're getting like followers and likes and you're like, yay. And then all of a sudden, and I'm getting messages from friends, fellow business, lady boss, amazing people going, um, are you all of a sudden not getting any exposure on your Instagram posts? And like you used to get 200 likes or 500 likes and now all of a sudden you're getting like 25 or 50 and you're like shit that is the algorithm welcome to being a complete bitch and <laughs> victim of the algorithm you guys you are at the mercy and you know it's i kind of feel like instagram and facebook and pinterest i'm, I'm sure will be there soon veronica says yeah i'm guilty of doing that is i'm sure they're sitting up there i wonder if they have fun watching all of us like freak out that we can't figure out the algorithm once they change it because they change it all of a sudden you get no warning you're stuck at square one the audience that you actually built so not only are you not getting exposed to new people you're not getting as many followers you're not getting as much exposure or organic reach what's also happening is the algorithm is reducing the number of people who have already said that they want to see your stuff. They've already followed you. They've already liked a few of your posts. All of a sudden, those people who want to see your stuff are not seeing your stuff as well. And that's because Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and every other social media platform, they are paid businesses and they cannot exist without having paying clients. And their paying clients are people that have to pay for ads. So what happens is then we go, 
oh shit, I'm not getting as much engagements. I'm not getting as many follows. And it's like, I'm going to boost this ad. And if you don't know what you're doing, then it's basically, like I said, it's just like, here, Facebook, take my $50 or $100. And then you're like, oh shit, now my, my, now my engagement is lo even lower. I wonder if it's lower because I boosted that ad. Now you're stuck in this cycle of constantly having to boost your posts in order to get that like and reach and exposure. And we're not actually looking at what are the numbers that matter in your business. You have a business. The definition of a business is you provide something, whether it be a product, a service, expertise, consulting, something, and people give you money. So if you're providing expertise and products and services and no one is giving you money, you don't really have a business. So when we look at it, it's not about the vanity numbers. It is about, is my business growing? If you're on social media, and we'll talk about this in a minute of which platforms are good for what things. But if you're on social media, we need to treat that like community, not as I have to get paying customers from this all the time, because chances are that's not going to happen, um, except for when you kind of go into a multifaceted strategy, which I'm going to talk about next. Okay. So what actually works? So we know that word of mouth referrals are not consistent. If you even can get them at all paid ads, costs a lot of money that you probably don't have and social media is eating up all your time and you don't even know if it's growing your business or not. So what actually works, okay? No matter what you do to market your business, whether it's those three things above, whether you're doing speaking um, engagements, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, but all of these things are ways of marketing your business, which is the act of trying to find new customers. So in my opinion, in my experience of doing this business for 11 years and having trying a lot of things that didn't work and a lot of things that do, you have to have a hub or a home that you send these potential customers to so that they can get to know you better. And this home is your website. So the content on your website can be shared to every single marketing outlet, which for you should be a newsletter. So an email list will make the mo it'll actually makes the most money for you if you do it right as any single marketing outlet but by far for me and for people like Marie Forleo and Jenna Kutcher and all of these really huge business owners do you think that they'd put the time and energy into an email list if it didn't actually work no they they know that it works they know that more than likely if you've listened to any even Jenna Kutcher's podcast she'll talk about her email sequence and how they acquire a customer and support them with the email sequence and get them to purchase. They have like a six month email sequence when some welcome email sequence when someone joins, which is amazing. So once you have your website, you share the content to your newsletter, you share it to social media in the way that works for that particular platform, because not every platform is the same. We'll talk about that in a minute. You can then make paid ads. Once you know that the content on your website is converting to paying clients, and four, we have not talked about speaking engagements. I have used my website incredibly successfully at speaking engagements because when you are lucky enough to have a speaking engagement and you have a captive audience, which is like the best thing ever, um, you have people there that actually have like raised their hand and want to listen to you and your expertise and your wisdom. So it's not just about inspiring them in that moment. It's about bringing them into this community that you are building through the combination of your website and social media. But what you do is I have a blog post on my website that talks about how you get people from these speaking engagements. And what you do is you give them a card. It's a card that's been pre-designed beforehand with fill in the blanks of facts that you're going to share from your presentation. You then create some sort of opt-in for them, a challenge, a meal plan, a freebie, a checklist, something, and say, go to my website here. So you bring up the card when you present and you say, okay, hey, there's, I know I'm going to uh, give a lot of facts to you guys so that you don't forget them. I've created a card and you can fill in everything that you learn right in this card. It's already set up for that. Now turn the card over and you're going to talk about it at the end of your presentation as well. Um, I want you to go to my website and I have this second kind of stage of action for you already laid out continuing what we talked about in this presentation. You can go and get it for free and they go to your website and they download and they become an email subscriber. Then that is where you create the trust. You show them your expertise and you turn them into paying clients there. So you can think of it like this. You want people, if you're, if you're watching this more than likely you want people to spend hundreds, if not 
thousands of thousands of dollars with you. So if you like me, when I um, was doing my one on one uh, health coaching services to work with me for six months, it was two thousand um, dollars. It was that including tax. So it was like eighteen hundred and thirty three dollars or something plus tax to equal two thousand dollars. Sorry, the light just changed, guys. Let me see if this helps. Um, so two thousand dollars. Do you think you're going to convert someone from one Instagram post to a two thousand dollar paying client? No, if you are selling essential oils or you're in network marketing, chances are what you're selling isn't actually a couple of thousand dollars. But when you add up the what that customer is going to be spending with you over their lifetime of being a customer with you, more than likely that's going to be multiple hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So you're not going to create that amount of trust with one social media post. You have to create trust over time. So I want to give you this analogy. So how do you do this with anyone new that you meet? I want you to think of a really close friend, a partner, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, someone who you either live with or spend a lot of time with. You didn't go up to them in a bar and tap on their shoulder and be like, want to get married? Okay, now we're married and this person is living with you. No, you like, and I used this analogy before. <laughs> this is kind of like bringing in politics, but when Donald Trump was doing the whole woman's woman's genital area grab and that is what we're kind of treating marketing like on social media we expect to put up one post and for this person to open up their wallet like they might have to open up other things this is going nowhere I'm, I'm sorry with that but that's what we're expecting we're expecting that that one post is going to grab that person and no we have to create trust when you met your husband or wife or partner, whoever it was, you maybe met them in, in public and then you maybe ask them on a date, more one-on-one, -on -one, but still in the social setting. This is kind of what social media should be. Then to get to know them even better, you invited them back to your home. Online, this is your website, but at home, it was your actual house and you're inviting them over, you're getting to know them better, you're spending more time with them before they're finally like, step one, we're dating. Step two, we're dating solely each other. If that was a thing that you maybe didn't have was this exclusivity. Step three is then they propose to you and you decide to get married and spend your lives together. Like there are steps to that trust and it didn't happen overnight with anyone that you know in your regular life. So why do we expect that same thing to happen with strangers on the internet? You have to treat strangers on the internet the same way that you would treat your spouse or your parents or anyone else in that you need to create these relationships with them before we can expect them to open up their wallets and spend money with us. So how do we recreate this in a scalable way using social media, but other tools? So like I said, you use your website as the hub, you create a blog post and then what you do with that blog post morning, Anna, um, essentially, yeah, thanks Laura. Such a good way to explain it. Right. Is like, we just need to look at the examples in our regular actual lives. So, when you look at creating the content on your website and then you're going to share it to all of these different places on social media. So there is, when I create a blog post, it's you share it on Facebook, you share it on Instagram, maybe you do an Instagram story for it, maybe you turn it into an Instagram live, you turn it into a YouTube video, you put the video back in the written blog post so that people who like to watch a video can watch the video and not have to read the whole article. But in that article, you have a way for someone to opt in and give you their email. They opt in and give you their email and then you take them through an email sequence, a nurture sequence to get them to trust you and to show that you're the expert. And then at the end of that sequence, then they purchase. So within 30 days, you are leading them through this relationship with you and they're hopefully becoming a paying customer. That's what it is. But when we look at social media and when I'm talking about each platform is different, this is the way that I look at it. If we're going back to kind of that dating analogy and we're looking for a husband or wife or partner um, and we're looking at these kind of like opportunities for networking and meeting someone new. Facebook, as far as I'm concerned now, Facebook is like your community center. Now, Facebook used to be the hot, sexy bar 10 years ago when we all first started using it. But now Facebook is more like the community center in terms of people are not necessarily scrolling through Facebook as mindlessly as they used to. We now use Instagram for that. But people are still in Facebook groups really having a great time getting answers, getting support, getting expertise for free before they decide to work with someone. So Facebook is like your community center. Instagram is like the hot sexy bar. Face Instagram is where you get all dolled up, you show your best side, you curl your hair and wash it like I did today, and you show up all pretty and beautiful and perfect 
in Instagram because it's like the bar in university or college when you're trying to find your boyfriend or girlfriend. So it's all about the face value first, but then you develop the relationship after with your witty and smart captions and then eventually getting them to your website, which is your home. Pinterest is like the mall. So the Pinterest is where people go when they are like, I have a project, I want to find specific information, or in a lot of ways, they're looking at literally redecorating their homes or spending money or they're looking for a health solution. That is what Pinterest is for, which is why I call it the mall. People go to Pinterest. People are over twice as likely to, likely to spend money on Pinterest than any other social media platform. And I think it's the average income level of Pinterest is something like $80,000 a year of income or higher. Like, does that not sound like your ideal client of people who you want buying your stuff? Absolutely. Pinterest is like the mall. It's where people go to buy. So other than Facebook groups, is it easy to build trust and a relationship with someone at the bar? No. Is it easy to build? Are you building long lasting relationships when you go look around the mall? No, you don't. You have to bring someone home to create trust. And that's what your website is. Your website is your digital home. You need to be proud of it. It needs to be something that like when I, it's funny when people look at my website and they come, let's say to my house, for some reason, they know me personally and they, or they meet me in person and I'm dressed in the colors on my website and my home is decorated in the colors on my website and people go, oh my God, you look like your web, like you're the walking embodiment of your website. And I'm like, because I created a digital home. I created a, a place online, my own little address, just like our own little house. It's a big, big world, you guys. And your home is like your own little piece of paradise that you get a chance to decorate and style and have certain feelings that you curate in your environment. It is your safe place to show people who you really are. That is the same thing on your website. There are millions and billions and billions of websites and you need a special place where you can curate that relationship with someone. So that's why there needs to be time and effort and energy spent into curating that in exactly the way that you want to. Veronica says it absolutely is. Yes, your, your website is your home. My website is my home and I love it. And Veronica has been in my home and she knows that my office and my rest of my house matches my website, which matches my wardrobe, which like that is me. I am me. My website is my virtual representation of me. And if you don't have that, then when you're sharing that with other people, you're not going to feel comfortable. You're going to be like, mm, mm, like this, no, like we're going to work on it and make it something that you're proud of. Aw. And Veronica says your home is so colorful and uplifting and see and smells incredible. Of course, because I used doTERRA essential oils. But this is the part that we don't think about when it comes to our websites as well, is we want to create this hub. We want to create this feeling, which is why we start with a feeling. I have started with five brand words. This is what I want people to feel when they come to my home and, or sorry, when they come to my website, which is the same feeling generally of when they come to my home, I want them to feel like it's bold. I want them to feel like it's fun. I want them to feel, um, I don't know if I put colorful, but I put, I can't remember what my five brand words are because I did it like two years. I rebranded, well, yeah, no, a year ago at this point, but it was the same brand words. So it's this feeling of like fun and uplifting, but behind the scenes, you all know that your homes run so much more smoother when you have a plan and somewhat of a loose strategy, right? So when you get up in the morning, especially if you're in the wellness uh, world, you know, I have, my son gets his supplements. I get my supplements. We have this routine that we go through, right? We make sure that my son's, well, make sure we, we attempt at packing his lunch the night before, but we know that we have to pack my son's lunch. He needs to be able to eat at school. So we have to pack his lunch. Yes, we could not pack his lunch, but then our son doesn't eat the whole day. Like that's not acceptable. That's frowned upon. I don't know if you knew that. It's frowned upon for a grade one to not have a lunch, to be able to eat at school. But when you look at that, so while you can have the uplifting and the fun and the pretty and everything like that, there is a strategy. Your home has a strategy for wellness. If you are watching this and you're a wellness practitioner or a holistic health business owner, your home is set up for wellness. You might have kombucha brewing. You might have beans or nut soaking for your nut milk. You might have your supplements out on the counter. You might have your essential oils and your diffuser going. You have specific things in your house to make sure that you can be well and that you can achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So when you look at your website, it needs to be the same thing. You're looking at your website with your paying, your future paying customers. And you need to say, 
okay, these people are coming to my website with a problem. They're always going to have a problem. No one has any time to just be like, I wonder what this girl's doing. Rarely people do that. It's, I have a problem. They found you through a specific blog post that you wrote and you share it on the interwebs everywhere on all the different social media channels, but they have a problem. They want to get better. You have a paid solution. You want them to get better and you know, you can make them better. You know, you can get them to where they want to go with their goals. What is missing is the in-between. We all think we just need the pretty website. It's like, oh, well, if it's pretty, like people will just not. No, we need to have the strategy. We need to have a flow that needs to be very intentional, not just for selling people stuff, but because your ultimate goal is getting them better. They're not going to get better when they're trying this thing over here and this thing over here and this thing over here. They need someone to guide them. They need someone who has been there before to create a wellness plan for them or to be their support instead of them trying to, you know, figure out their way through the mire on their own, right? Like they're wading through quicksand, hoping for a lifeline and you are that lifeline, but we need to create this very intentional space that is set up to feel the way that you want them to feel, but also has the systems in place behind the scenes. This is where I talk about systems with soul is that there needs to be this system in place behind that they don't even know is working. Like my son isn't well, he doesn't know that like he, like he knows that he takes his vitamin and he has, I would drop vitamin D on it and he gets his focus oil in the back of his neck and we put lice spray in his hair and we roll, you know, a, an immune boosting oil blend up the back, up his back, up his spine every morning. He doesn't know that those are systems. He just knows that he isn't sick as often. He doesn't even know that he's six. He just knows he has energy to play with his friends every day. But we know that he's not sick as often because we have these systems in place. But for him, he gets to experience the wonderful feeling of our home. Like Veronica said that everyone else gets to feel that it's colorful and that it's uplifting and that it smells incredible. He doesn't need to know why those systems are set up. He just needs to experience them. And he needs to feel better at the end of the day. It's the same thing with your customers, right? So that's what we're focusing on this week is we are focusing on, and I'm taking you through this system that I've created of how you can do this on autopilot, how you can have this hub working behind the scenes if you heaven forbid want to take time off. If you're like me, I'm going to share my story on Friday about my, my experience with chronic anxiety and not being able to show up like this every day on live because maybe I'm having a panic attack on my couch, but my website is working behind the scenes always to find me new paying customers. And my business is growing always because of that. So I'm going to share that with you this week. So you can click on my Insta, uh, Instagram stories. If you want to get the reminders, you can see the four other subjects that we're covering tomorrow. We are covering uh, how to find the time to build your brand and website. All this shit takes so much time, you guys. And I know that you're all busy. Everyone is busy. It's just, how are you busy? It's just busy. It just comes out of our mouths. We don't even think about it. No one has the time to build a website. No one has the time to brand themselves. No one has the time to blog. But it's like anything else. When you make the time and you start seeing the amazing, scalable, duplicatable results, you're like, oh, I want to do this more. Kind of like me using this mouthwash. I just shared the story of this mouthwash where I'm getting a cavity to go away. And at first I was doing it as an experiment. I was just like, oh, let's see if I can use this mouthwash and get this cavity to go away. But then I just had my six month checkup and the cavity is actually going away. So now that I'm seeing a little bit of results, I actually want to stick with the mouthwash that got me the result in the first place, because that's the only thing I've really changed in the last year and a half since having this cavity. So tomorrow we're covering how to find the time to build your brand and website. I'll be back here at 11 a.m. live. This recording will be up for 24 hours, but there's also a link in my profile. I'm going to put this recording into a page on my website. See how I'm using my website as my home? And I'm going to put this video up there so that it will live forever and ever if you want to see it. But reminder, if you also click the link in my profile or on Facebook, you're going to click the link above this video. There's a link to get on my wait list. My doors are opening to my course on Sunday, this coming Sunday, April the 7th. It's going to be $100 off and a payment plan, guys. And there's only like four days that I'm offering that. All right. And um, if you want any information about that, please put your name in there. And if you have any questions, I'm going to put up an Instagram story. I'll make sure I put up a question box. So if you have any specific questions about your website or branding or building a business on autopilot, I'm going to be answering them all live on Sunday at noon. Okay. You're welcome, Laura, Lori, Lori. 
Um, I'm so glad I could help all of you. I'm going to hop off now. I'm going to hop off on Facebook. I will see you guys tomorrow. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here via DM. Bye, guys.